everyone. Uh, welcome to the fifth annual Lawrence High School Poetry Out Loud competition. I'm so glad you all could be here. So uh, today's going to be a really special day. I feel it. Partly because we had so much talent this year, we had to expand the field from 12 finalists to 16 finalists because we had ties at every grade level in the grade level auditions. Uh, these kids have put their hard work and their heart into these poems. They're going to do a wonderful job for you. And now it is my sincere pleasure to turn the floor over to your masters of ceremony, Audley Clark, Michael Marsh, and the voice of Poetry Out Loud for three years, Marie Bushman. Welcome students, parents, teachers, and administration to the fifth annual Lawrence High School Poetry Out Loud competition. Today's contest will determine the school champion and who will represent the Lawrence Cardinals at the New Jersey Regional Competition. Before we begin, the English department would like to extend their deepest gratitude to the following people, without whose support this contest would not be possible. Audience, please hold your applause until the end. First, the Lawrence Township Board of Education. Our principal, Dr. Jonathan Dauber, and our assistant principals, Allison Fisher, Jessica Sincada, and Clifford Williams. Barbara Beers, Supervisor of Humanities. Tom Irvin for coordinating lights, sound, and videography. Peg Floyd and Carol Weber for keeping things running smoothly. Doreen Welsh and the Student Council for donating prizes for today's top finishers. Louis Ruiz and the entire custodial staff. The numerous teachers who have spent their time, support, and enthusiasm on this program. The parents and family members who have come to support the contestants. As demonstrated by the thoughtful donations of time, equipment, and prizes, this is truly a community event that is being shared by all of the LHS family. Thank you to all. We would now like to introduce you to the judges panel who will be evaluating today's contest. We have Mr. Carney, Ms. Ingram, Mrs. Palumbo, Mr. Rick, Mrs. Ross, Mr. Rowe, and Mrs. Zimmerman. Poetry Out Loud invites the dynamic aspects of slam poetry, spoken word and theater into the English class. The National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation have partnered with the state arts agencies to support the expansion of Poetry Out Loud, which encourages the nation's youth to learn about great poetry through memorization and performance. This exciting program helps students master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about their literary heritage. The competitors today will be evaluated in six areas of performance. Physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, level of difficulty, evidence of understanding, and accuracy of memorization. Without further ado, let the competition begin. First, we have Haley Grothenthal. She is currently a senior here at Lawrence High School. She is president of both the Theater Company and tri M Music Honor Society. When she's not on stage, she enjoys reading all kinds of books, but especially Lord of the Kings and a, and a Sure of Ice and Fire. Baudelaire by Delmore Schwartz. When I fall asleep, and even during sleep, I hear quite distinctly voices speaking whole phrases, commonplace and trivial, having no relation to my affairs. Dear mother, is any time left to us in which to be happy? My debts are immense. My bank account is subject to the court's judgment. I know nothing. I cannot know anything. I have lost the ability to make an effort. But now, as before, my love for you increases. You are always armed to stone me, always. It is true, it dates from childhood. For the first time in my long life, I am almost happy. 
The book, almost finished, almost seems good. It will endure, a monument to my obsessions, my hatred, my disgust. That's an inquietude's persist and weaken me. Satan glides before me, saying sweetly, rest for a day. You can rest and play today. Tonight you will work. When night comes, my mind, terrified by the arrears, bored by sadness, paralyzed by impotence, promises, tomorrow, I will tomorrow. Tomorrow, the same comedy enacts itself with the same resolution, the same weakness. I am sick of this life of furnished rooms. I am sick of having colds and headaches. You know my strange life. Every day brings its quota of wrath. You little know a poet's life, dear mother. I must write poems, the most fatiguing of occupations. I am sad this morning. Do not reproach me. I write from a cafe near the post office amid the click of billiard balls, the clatter of dishes, the pounding of my heart. I have been asked to write a history of caricature. I have been asked to write a history of sculpture. Shall I write a history of the characters of the sculptures of you in my heart? Although it costs you countless agony, although you cannot believe it necessary and doubt that the sum is accurate, please, Send me money enough for at least three weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Next up, we have Zora Holness. Zora is a junior at Lawrence High School, and she enjoys reading books, like novels such as The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, and writing creative stories. Being named after the leader of the, she enjoys being named after a leader of the Harlem Renaissance and growing up going to school in Harlem, New York. She also enjoys going out and being part of the black community interest and she really enjoys poets and choosing poets by black poets. The Paradox by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I, and the mother of sorrows. I am the ender of grief. I am the bud and the blossom. I am the late falling leaf. I am thy priest and thy poet. I am thy serf and thy king. I cure the tears of the heart sick. When I come near, they shall sing. White are my hands as the snowdrop. Swart are my fingers as clay. Dark is my frown as the midnight. Fair is my brow as the day. Battle and war are my minions, doing my will as divine. I am the calmer of passions. Peace is a nursling of mine. Speak to me gently or curse me. Seek me or fly from my sight. I am thy fool in the morning. Thou art my slave in the night. Down to the grave will I take thee out from the noise of the strife. Then shalt thou see me and know me, death then no longer, but life. Then shalt thou sing at my coming, kiss me with passionate breath, clasp me and smile to have thought me, aught save the foeman of death. Come to me, brother, when weary. Come when thy lonely heart swells. I'll guide thy footsteps and lead thee down where 
the dream woman dwells. Thank you. All right, next up we have Diego Montalegre out of the sophomore class. Diego loves to read books written by Don Brown. His favorite novel is The Lost Symbol. He's very interested in the arts and he plays the saxophone as well as dances, hip hop, ballroom, and Latin. A March in the Ranks, Hard Pressed, and the Road Unknown by Walt Whitman. A March in the Ranks, Hard Pressed, and the Road Unknown. A route through a heavy wood with muffled steps in the darkness. Our army foiled with loss severe and the sullen remnant retreating till after midnight glimmer upon us the lights of a dim lighted building. We come to an open space in the woods and halt by the dim lighted building. Tis a large old church at the crossing roads, now an impromptu hospital. Entering, but for a minute, I see a sight beyond all the pictures and poems ever made. Shadows of deepest, deepest black, just lit by moving candles and lamps, and by one great pitchy torch stationary with wild red flames and clouds of smoke. By these crowds, groups of forms vaguely I see on the floor. Some on the pews laid down at my feet, more distinctly a soldier, a mere lad in danger of bleeding to death. He is shot in the abdomen. I stanch the blood temporarily. The youngster's face is white as a lily. Then, before I depart, I sweep my eyes or the scene feign to absorb it all. Faces, varieties, postures beyond description, most in obscurity, some of them dead. Surgeons operating, attendants holding lights, the smell of ether, the odor of blood, the crowd. Oh, the crowd of the bloody forms. The yard outside also filled. Some on the bare ground, some on planks or stretchers, some in the death spasm sweating. An occasional scream or cry, the doctors shouted orders or calls. The glisten of the little steel instruments catching the glitten of the torches. Then I resume as I chant. I see again the forms. I smell the odor. Then here outside the orders given, Fall in, my men, fall in. But first, I bend to the dying lad. His eyes open, a half smile gives he me. Then the eyes close, calmly close. And I speed forth to the darkness. Resuming, marching, ever in darkness, marching. A march in the ranks and the road unknown, still marching. Thank you. Next up to the stage, we have our first freshman, Gabrielle Cody. 
She enjoys reading Harry Potter novels and Hunger Games books. She likes reading Shel Silverstein poems and is interested in writing, reading, and dancing. Give All to Love by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Give all to love, obey thy heart. Friends, kindred, days, estate, good frame. Plans, credit, and the muse, nothing refuse. T is a brave master, let it have scope. Follow it utterly, hope beyond hope. High and more high, it dives into noon. With wing unspent, untold intent. But it is a god, knows its own path, and the outlets of the sky. It was never for the mean. It requireth courage stout, souls above doubt, valor unbending. It will reward, they shall return more than they were, and ever ascending. Leave all for love, yet hear me yet. One ward more thy heart behoved, one pulse more a firm endeavor. Keep thee today, tomorrow, forever, free as an Arab of thy beloved. Cling with life to the maid, but when the surprise, first vague shadow a surmise, flits across her bosom young, of a joy apart from thee. Free be she, fancy free. Though Dow detain her vesture's hem, where the palest rose she flung from her summer diadem. Though thou loved her as thyself, as a self of purer clay, though her parting dims the day, stealing grace from all alive, heartily know, when half gods go, the gods arrive. Thank you. Next up, we have Natasha Vargas. Natasha is a senior at Lawrence High School, and she loves to read. Right now, she's reading Chris Everett Lloyd's autobiography entitled Chrissy. This spring, she'll be performing in the musical Legally Blonde as Vivianne Westwood. Yeah. Ecology by Jack Collum. Surrounded by bone, Surrounded by cells, by rings, by rings of hell, by hair. Surrounded by air is a thing, surrounded by silhouette, by honey-wet bees, yet by skeletons of trees. Surrounded by actual, yes, for practical purposes, people. Surrounded by surreal popcorn, surrounded by the reborn. Surrender in the center to surroundings. Oh, surrender forever, never end her. Let her blend around. Surrender to the surroundings that surround the tender endo. Surrender that tumble through the tumbling to that blue that curls around the crumbling to that, the blue that rumbles under the sun, bounding the pearl that we walk on, talk on. We can chalk that up to experience, sensing the brown here that's blue now, a drop of water surrounding a cow that's black and white, the warbling black Bernian Twitter that's machining midnight, orange in the light that's glittering in the light green visible wind that's the ticket to the tunnel through the thicket that's a cricket's funnel of music to correct and pick it out from under the wing that whirls up over and out Thank you. we now have rod macho out of the junior class who loves to write and edit for the Laurentian. Other than that, most of his writing is for school assignments. He also plays several musical instruments, including the violin, which he plays for our school orchestra. Outside of school, he enjoys watching movies at the s and sleeping at the same time. <laughs> To 
to a mouse on turning up in her nest with the plow, November 1785, by Robert Burns. We, sleek it, cowering, timorous beastie, oh, what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou need nae star to us a hasty, with bickering brattle. I would be laith to run and chase thee with murder and paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal. I doubt no whiles, but thou may thieve. What then, poor beastie, thou mun live? A daemonicker in a thrave's a small request. I'll get a blessing with the lave, and never missed. Thy wee bit housey, too, in ruin. Its silly walls the winds are strewing, and naething now to big a new one of foggage green, and bleak December's winds ensuing, baith snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and waste, and weary winter coming fast, and cozy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell, till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap of leaves and stibble hath cost thou money a weary nibble. Now thou's turned out for all thy trouble but house or hold, to thole the winter's sleety dribble and cranier cold. But Mousy, thou art no thy lane, Improving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of mice and men gang off to glay, and lee us not but grief and pain for promised joy. Still, thou art blessed to compare with me. The present only toucheth thee, but oh, I backward cast my eye on prospects drear, and forward, though I cannot see, I guess and fear. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. Next up to the stage, we have Clara Benyash. She's currently a sophomore here at Lawrence High School. She enjoys literature and public speaking and have always, that have always been great interest to her. So she's very excited for this competition. When she has the opportunity and time, she enjoys reading Jody Pickett books about court cases, which really interest her. Amongst her ho hobbies, she enjoys a variety of sports and is extremely passionate about traveling and experiencing all of the different experiences that life has to offer. Amor Mundi by Christina Rossetti. Oh, where are you going with your love locks flowing on the west wind blowing along this valley track? The downhill path is easy. Come with me and it please ye. We shall escape the uphill by never turning back. So they two went together in glowing August weather. The honey-breathing heather lay to their left and right. And dear she was to dote on. Her swift feet seemed to float on the air like soft twin pigeons, too sportive to alight. Oh, what is that in heaven where gray cloud flakes are seven, where blackest clouds hang riven just at the rainy skirt? Oh, that's a meteor sent us, a message dumb, pretentious, an undeciphered, solemn signal of help or hurt. Oh, what is that glides quickly, where velvet flowers grow thickly, their scent comes rich and sickly? A scaled and hooded worm. Oh, what's that in the hollow, so pale I quake to follow? Oh, that's a thin dead body which waits the eternal term. Turn again, oh my sweetest, turn again, false and fleetest. This beaten way thou beatest, I fear is hell's own track. Nay, too steep for hill mounting. Nay, too late for cost counting. This downhill path is easy, but there's no turning back. Thank you. Next up, we have Melissa Rothenberg. 
Melissa is a freshman at Lawrence High School and she is a huge fan of the Harry Potter, Hunger Games, and Divergent book series. In middle school, she won the VFW essay contest within the county. She currently plays softball year round and coaches a seven year old girls basketball team. Eagle Plane by Robert Francis. The American Eagle is not aware he is the American Eagle. He is never tempted to look modest. When orators advertise the American Eagle's virtues, the American Eagle is not listening. This is his virtue. He is somewhere else. He is mountains away. But even if he were near, he would never make an audience. The American Eagle never says he will serve if drafted, will dutifully serve, etc. He is not at our service. If we have honored him, we have honored one who unequivocally honors himself by overlooking us. He does not know the meaning of magnificent. Perhaps we do not altogether either who cannot touch him. Thank you. Okay, the last performance for this period is Brooke Zellner. She is a senior who loves reading. Her favorite genre is romance novels, and her favorite series to read in her free time is Christy Miller. Let's give it up for Brooke. Battle Hymn of the Republic by Julia Ward Howe. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fatal lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. I have read a fiery gospel written in burnished rows of steel. As ye deal with my contemners, so with you my grace shall deal. Let the hero born of woman crush the serpent with his heel, since God is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift my soul to answer him. Be jubilant my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom, that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. To start off this period, we will start off with Diana Gonzalez. She loves to play piano, go for runs, and play lacrosse. Her favorite author is Agatha Christie. Zacuan Papalotels by Brenda Cardenas. In memory of Jose Antonio Borciega, 1947 to 1996. We are chameleons, we become chameleon. Jose Antonio Borciega. We are the space between the black orange blur of a million monarchs on their two generation migration, south to fur crowned. Michoacan, where tree trunks will sprout feathers, a forest of paper thin wings. Our Mexico cocooned in the membranes de la Madre Tierra. Say we are reborn, Zacuan Papalotels, mariposas negras y anaranjadas, and who sweep the dead whisper. We are the flicker between a chameleon's tail that turns his desert blue backbone to jade or pink sand, the snakeskin fraternal twins of solstice and equinox, the ashen dawn, silvering dusk, la oración, 
as it leaves the lips, tugged from sleep, glide into dreams that husk out mestizo memory. We are one life passing through the prism of all colors, gathering song and color, sempastuchil and drum, to leave, a to leave a rhythm scattered on the wind, dust tinting the tips of fingers as we slip into our new light. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Next up, we have Galinda Karamba. Her favorite book is The Skin I'm In, her favorite poet is Maya Angelou, and her favorite poems are Caged Bird and Phenomenal Woman. I am offering this poem to you by Jimmy Santiago Baca. I am offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you, or like a pair of thick socks that the cold cannot bite through. I love you. I have nothing else to give, so it's a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It's a scarf for your head to wear over your hair to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost, needing direction in the wilderness when life becomes mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or hogan. And dense trees come knocking and I will answer. Give you direction. Let you warm yourself by this fire. Rest by this fire and make you feel safe. It is all I have to give and all anyone needs to live and to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. Thank you. Next to the stage is Anshul Ike, a freshman. Anshul's favorite genres of literature are realistic fiction, scientific fiction, and theater. She really likes music and enjoys to sing. Her favorite subjects are English and history, and she really likes to play tennis, even though she claims she's not that good at it yet. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood. I remember, I remember, the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now, I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember, the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built and where my brother sat, the laburnum on his birthday, that tree is living yet. I remember, I remember, where I used to swing, and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirits flew in feathers then, which is so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember, I remember, the fir trees dark and high, and thought their tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now tis little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. Thank you. Next up to the stage, we have current senior Matadi Balev. If Matadi isn't busy with schoolwork or hobbies, you are guaranteed to find him reading a book. An avid reader, Matadi loves all works of literature, ranging from the non-fictional Malcolm Gladwell to the nostalgic fantasies of J.K. Rowling. He's very involved in the arts and could not be more thankful for his opportunity to, pre to present in poetry out loud. Thank you. Uh, 
The Gift by Lee Young Lee. To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited a story in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and not the blade. Before the story ended, he'd remove the iron sliver I thought I'd die from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still, a well of dark water, a prayer. And I recall his hands, two measures of tenderness he laid against my face, the flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm, a silver tear, a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here, where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down, so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this, and I did not hold that shod between my fingers and think, metal that will bury me, christen it little assassin, or going deep from my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death, visited here. I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kiss my father. Thank you. Next, we have Gina Del Tago. She is a junior at Lawrence High School, and she is a big fan of romantic novels. She loves the Twilight and Hunger Games series, and her favorite movie is Slumdog Millionaire. Her favorite poem is And To the Little Ones by Lisa Sharon Harper. She enjoys tweeting and going on Instagram, and of course, reading her AP Chem textbook. Is Mr. Davis out there? She also enjoys singing, dancing, and drawing. The Heaven of Animals by James L. Dickey. Here they are, the soft eyes open. If they have lived in a wood, it is a wood. If they have lived on plains, it is grass rolling under their feet forever. Having no souls, they have come, anyway, beyond their knowing. Their instincts wholly bloom and they rise. The soft eyes open. To match them, the landscape flowers outdoing, desperately outdoing what is required. The richest wood, the deepest field. For some of these, it could not be the place it is without blood. These hunt as they have done, but with claws and teeth grown perfect, more deadly than they can believe. They stalk more silently and crouch on the limbs of trees and their descent upon the bright backs of their prey. May take years in a sovereign floating of joy. And those that are hunted know this as their life. Their reward? to walk under such trees in full knowledge of what is in glory above them and to feel no fear but acceptance, compliance, fulfilling themselves without pain. At the cycle center, they tremble. They walk under the tree, they fall, they are torn. They rise, they walk again. Next up is Marissa Imerdino out of the sophomore class. Marissa loves reading young adult novels, both on her nook along with buying books from the store. Some of her favorite genres of novels are science fiction, dystopian fiction, and fantasy. I felt a funeral in my brain by Emily Dickinson. I felt a funeral in my brain, as mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, 
till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll as all the heavens wore a bell and being but an ear. And I, in silence, some strange race, wrecked, solitary, here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. To finish off this round, we will finish with the freshman, Sophie Slutsky. Sophie enjoys uh, the Hunger Games. Her favorite book is The Giver by Lois Lowry. And her favorite poet is Shel Siverstein. Epitaph by Catherine Phillips. What on earth? deserves our trust. Youth and beauty both are dust. Long we gathering are with pain what one moment calls again. Seven years childless marriage passed. A son, a son is born at last. So exactly limbed and fair, full of good spirits, mean and air as a long life promised. Yet, in less than six weeks dead, too promising, too great a mind, in so small room to be confined. Therefore, as fit in heaven to dwell, he quickly broke the prison shell. So the subtle alchemist can't, with Hermes seal, resist the powerful spirit's subtler flight. But to bid him, long good night. And so, the sun, if it arise, half so glorious as his eyes, like this infant, takes a shroud, buried in a morning cloud. That concludes our first round of competition, and for the sake of time, we're going to move right into the second round, starting with Haley Grodenthal. Haley Grodenthal would like to give special thanks to our wonderful mom and Mrs. Henderson for being so supportive of her. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand, glimmering and vast, out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Only where the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon-blanched land. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles, which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin, then cease, and then again begin, with tremulous cadence, slow, and bring the eternal note sadness in. Sophocles, long ago, heard it on the Aegean, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. 
The sea of faith was once too at the full, and lay round earth's shore like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long, withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear, and the night naked shingles of the world. Ah, love, let us be true to one another, for the world which lies before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here, as on a darkling plain, swept with, al with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Next, we have Zora Holness. Zora's mother is here supporting her today, and Zora would like to thank her for instilling in her the drive to try her hardest in everything she comes across in life, including this Poetry Out Loud competition. A Song in the Front Yard by Gwendolyn Brooks. I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want to peek at the back, where it's rough and untended and hungry weed grows. A girl gets sick of a rose. I want to go in the backyard now, and maybe down the alley to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother sneers, but I say it's fine how they don't have to go in at a quarter to nine. My mother, she tells me that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman, that George will be taken to jail sooner or late on account of last winter he sold our back gate. But I say it's fine. Honest, I do. And I'd like to be a bad woman too and wear the brave stockings of night black lace and strut the streets with paint on my face. Thank you. I'd like to welcome back Diego Montalegre. Diego wants to thank his family and friends who give him inspiration every day. Ode on a Gratian Urn by John Keats. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian, who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf fringe legends haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both in Tempe or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loth? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes, play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeared. Pipe to the spared deities of no tone. Fair youth, beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, Never canst thou kiss, though winning near the goal. Yet, do not grieve. She cannot fade. Though thou hast not thy bliss, 
thou wilt love forever and she be fair. Ah, happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu. And happy melodist, unwearied, forever piping songs forever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young, all breathing human passion far above that leaves a heart high, sorrowful, and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O oh, mysterious priest? Leadest thou that heifer lowing at the skies and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore or mountain built with peaceful citadel is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And little town, thy streets evermore will silent be and not a soul to tell. And not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can e'er return. Oh, attic shape, fair attitude, breed of marble men and maidens overwrought with forest branches and trodden weed. Thou silent form dost tease us out of thought as doth eternity. Cold pastoral, when old age shall this generation waste Thou shalt remain. This remain on other wall. There's mine, a friend to man, to whom thou sayst, beauty is truth, truth beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. Thank you, Diego. Next up to the stage, we have freshman Gabrielle Cody. She wants to thank LHS for letting her be a part of this event, and she wants to thank Poetry Out Loud for allowing her to have this wonderful experience, and she also wants to acknowledge her parents for helping her with her poem, and finally, she wants to give a shout out and thanks to Mrs. Erico. Kindness by Yusef Komunyaka. When deeds splay before us, precious as gold and unused chances stripped from the wine bone, we know the moment kind heartedness walks in. Each praise be echoes us back as the years uncount themselves eating salt. Though blood first shaped us on the climbing wheel, the human mind lit by the savannah's ice star and thistle rose. Your knowing gaze enters a room and opens the day, saying we were made for fun. Even the bedazzled brute knows when sunlight falls through leaves across hone knives on the table. If we can see it, push shadows aside, growing closer. Are we less broken? A barometer, temperature gauge, a ruler in minus fractions and pedigrees, a thingmajig, a probe with an all-seeing eye. What do we need to measure kindness? Every unheld breath, every unkind leap year? Sometimes, a sober voice is enough to calm the waters and drive away the false witnesses, saying, look, here are the broken treaty's beauty brought to us earthbound sentinels.
Next, it is my pleasure to welcome Natasha Vargas back to the stage. <laughs> Natasha would like to say thank you to Miss Erica, Miss Jari, and Miss Henderson for supporting her in the Poetry Out Loud competition each year. And she'd like to thank her parents, Denise and Andre, for being here to support her today. Thoughtless Cruelty by Charles Lamb. There, Robert, you have killed that fly. And should you thousand ages try the life you've taken to supply, you could not do it. You surely must have been devoid of thought and sense to have destroyed a thing which no way you annoyed. You'll one day rue it. Twas but a fly, perhaps you'll say. That's born in April, dies in May. That does but just learn to display his wings one minute, and in the next is vanished quite. A bird devours it in his flight, or come a cold blast in the night, there's no breath in it. A, the bird but seeks his proper food, and providence, whose power endued that fly with life, when thinks it good, may justly take it. But you have no excuses for it. A life by nature made so short, less reason is that you for sport should shorter make it. A fly, a little thing you rate, but Robert, do not estimate a creature's pain by small or great. The greatest being can have but fibers, nerves, and flesh, and these the smallest ones possess, although their frame and structure less escape our seeing. Back up to the stage is Rod Macho. Rod would like to thank Mr. Wolf, Nelson Mandela, Bruce Willis, and Gerald Ford, in that order. Another Feeling by Ruth Stone. Once you saw a drove of young pigs crossing the highway, one of them pulling his body by the front feet, the hind legs dragging flat. Without thinking, you call the Humane Society. They came with a net and went for him. They were matter of fact, there were two of them, their truck ominous with a cage. He was hiding in the weeds. It was then you saw his eyes. He understood. He was trembling. After they took him, you began to suffer regret. Years later, you remember his misfit body scrambling to reach the others. Even at this moment, your heart is going too fast. Your hands sweat. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. Back up to the stage, we have Clara Benyash. She's a sophomore, and she would like to say thank you to all of her friends and teachers who are always there to support her and help her in whatever she puts her mind to. And especially, she would like to thank her mom, who has endless patience and compassion towards her. She honestly owes her so much. Conversation by I. Robert Lowell. We smile at each other, and I lean back against the wicker couch. How does it feel to be dead, I say. You touch my knees with your blue fingers, and when you open your mouth, a ball of yellow light falls to the floor and burns a hole through it. Don't tell me, I say. I don't want to hear. Did you ever, you start, wear a certain kind of silk dress and just by accident 
So inconsequential, you barely notice it. Your fingers graze that dress, and you hear the sound of a knife cutting paper. You see it, too. And you realize how that image is simply the extension of another image. That your own life is a chain of words that one day will snap. Words, you say. Young girls in a circle, holding hands, and beginning to rise heavenward in their confirmation dresses like white helium balloons, the wreaths of flowers on their heads spinning. And above all that, that's where I'm floating. And that's what it's like only 10 times clearer, 10 times more horrible. Could anyone alive survive it? Thank you. Next, we have Melissa Rothenberg. Melissa would like to thank her parents and twin brother for helping her memorize her poems. She would also like to thank Miss Merkin for inspiring her to do her very best. Finally, her friends Casey and Sarah for putting up with her nonsense in English class every day. Melissa is joined today by her parents and her two brothers, Jeff and Daniel. She walks in beauty by Lord Byron, George Gordon. She walks in beauty, like the night, cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright, met in her aspect and her eyes, thus mellowed to that tender light, which heaven to gaudy days denies. One shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace, which waves in every raven tress or softly lightens o'er her face, where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek, and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet elegant, the smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days in goodness spent, the mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Thank you. Back to the stage, we have Brooke Zellner. Brooke would like to give a thanks to her dad and mom for encouraging her, encouraging her to be herself and do nothing less than the best. She'd also like to give a shout out to her sister who listened to her recite this poem so many times she could possibly recite it herself. Father by Edgar Albert Guest. My father knows the proper way the nation should be run. He tells us children every day just what should now be done. He knows the way to fix the trusts. He has a simple plan. But if the furnace needs repairs, we have to hire a man. My father, in a day or two, could land big thieves in jail. There's nothing that he cannot do. He knows no word like fail. Our confidence he would restore. Of that, there is no doubt. But if there is a chair to mend, we have to send it out. All public questions that arise, he settles on the spot. He waits not till the tumult dies, but grabs it while it's hot. In matters of finance, he can tell Congress what to do. But oh, he finds it hard to meet his bills as they fall due. It almost makes him sick to read the things lawmakers say. Why, father's just the man they need. He never goes astray. All wars he'd very quickly end, as fast as I can write it. But when a neighbor starts a fuss, tis mother has to fight it. In conversation, father can do many wondrous things. He's built upon a wiser plan than presidents or kings. He knows the ins and outs of each and every deep transaction. We look to him for theories, but look to Ma for action. Next, we have Galinda Karamba. Galinda would like to thank Ms. Henderson for encouraging her to do her best. She also would like to thank her family for supporting her and letting her recite her poem to them. In memoriam, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Honey, P. 
people murder. Mercy. U.S.A. The milk land turned to monsters. Teach to kill, to violate, pull down, destroy the weakly. Freedom growing fruit from being born. America. Tomorrow, yesterday, rip, rape, exacerbate, despoil, disfigure, crazy running threat, the deadly thrall. Appall, belief, dispel, the wildlife burn the breast, the onward tongue, the outward hand, deform the normal rainy riot. Sunshine, shelter, wreck of darkness, derogate, delimit, blink, explode, deprive, assassinate, and batten up like bullets fatten up. The raving greed, reactive a springtime terrorizing death by men, by more, than you or I can stop. They sleep who know a regulated place, or pulse, or tide, or changing sky according to some universal stage direction, obvious like shore washed shells. We share an afternoon of mourning. In between, no next predictable except for wild reversal, hearse rehearsal. Bleach the black lone lunging rituals of fright, insanity, and more deplorable abortion. More and more. Thank you. Next up is Anshul Ike. She would like to thank her wonderful family for supporting, supporting her in what she does, especially her mother who is in attendance today. She'd also like to thank her friends who keep her sane and calm. The Painter by John Ashbery. Sitting between the sea and the buildings, he enjoyed painting the sea's portrait. But just as children imagine a prayer is merely silence, he expected his subject to rush up the sand and seizing a brush, plaster its own portrait on the canvas. So there was never any paint on the canvas until the people who lived in the buildings put him to work. Try using the brush as a means to an end. Select for a portrait something less angry and large and more subject to a painter's moods or perhaps to a prayer. How could he explain to them his prayer? That nature, not art, might usurp the canvas. He chose his wife for a new subject, painting her vast, like ruined buildings, as if, forgetting itself, the portrait had already expre expressed itself without a brush. Slightly encouraged, he dipped his brush into the sea, murmuring a heartfelt prayer. My soul, when I paint this next portrait, let it be you who wrecks the canvas. The news spread like wildfire throughout the buildings. He had gone back to the sea for his subject. Imagine a painter crucified by a subject, too exhausted to even lift his brush. He provokes some artists leaning from the buildings to malicious mirth. We have a prayer now of putting ourselves on the canvas or getting the sea to sit for a portrait. Others declared it a self-portrait. Finally, all indications of a subject began to fade, leaving the canvas perfectly white. He put down his brush. At once a howl, that was also a prayer, arose from the overcrowded buildings. They tossed him the portrait from the tallest of the buildings, and the sea devoured the canvas and the brush, as if the subject had decided to remain nothing but a prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Anshul. Next up to the stage, we have Matadi Balev. He would like to thank and give a special shout out to Poetry Out Loud and all of his supporters, teachers, friends, and family. And of course, Mrs. Henderson. A march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown by Walt Whitman. A march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown. A route through a heavy wood with muffled steps in the darkness. Our army foiled with loss severe and the sullen remnant retreating. Till after midnight glimmer upon us the light 
of a dim lighted building. We come to an open space in the woods and halt by the dim lighted building. It is a large old church at the crossing roads, now an impromptu hospital. Entering before a minute, I see a sight beyond all the pictures and poems ever made. Shadows of deepest, deepest black, just lit by moving candles and lamps, and by one great pitchy torch stationary with wild red flame and clouds of smoke. By these crowds, groups of forms vaguely I see on the floor, some in the pews laid down. At my feet, more distinctly, a soldier, a mere lad in danger of bleeding to death. He is shot in the abdomen. I staunch the blood temporarily, the youngster's face as white as a lily's. Then, before I depart, I sweep my eyes over the scene, fain to absorb it all. Faces, varieties, postures beyond description, most in obscurity, some of them dead. Surgeons operating, attendants holding lights, the smell of ether, the odor of blood, the crowd, Ooh, the crowd of the bloody forms of soldiers, the yard outside also filled. Some on the bare ground, some on planks or stretchers, some in the death spasm sweating, an occasional scream or cry, the doctors shouted orders. <sighs> the glisten of the little steel instruments catching the glint of the torches. These I, these I resume as I chant. I see again the forms. I smell the odor. Then here outside, orders given. Fall in, my men. Fall in. But first I bend to the dying lad, his eyes open. A half smile gives he me. Then the eyes close, calmly close. And I speed forth to the darkness, resuming, marching ever in darkness marching. On in the ranks, the unknown road, still marching. Thank you. Thank you, Matadi. To kick off this period, I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Gina Del Tego. She would like to give a major thank you to her mom, dad, and brothers. They are her biggest fans, along with her close friends for all of their support. Special thanks to her English teachers and all of the people that have helped her prepare her for her poem today. Today she is joined by her mother, father, and brother. The Paradox by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I am the mother of sorrows. I am the ender of grief. I am the bud and the blossom. I am the late falling leaf. I am thy priest and thy poet. I am thy serf and thy king. I cure the tears of the heart sick. When I come near, they shall sing. White are my hands as the snowdrop. Swart are my fingers as clay. Dark is my frown as the midnight, fair is my brow as the day. Battle and war are my minions, doing my will as divine. I am the calmer of passions, peace is a nursling of mine. Speak to me gently or curse me, seek me or fly from my sight. I am thy fool in the morning, thou art my slave in the night. Down to the grave will I take thee, out from the noise of the strife. Then shalt thou see me and know me, death then no longer, but life. 
Then shalt thou sing at my coming, kiss me with passionate breath, clasp me and smile to have thought me art save the foe man of death. Come to me, brother, when weary. Come when thy lonely heart swells. I'll guide thy footsteps and lead thee down where the dream woman dwells. Back to the stage is Marissa Imerdino. She would like to give a shout out to her father who is in attendance today, and she'd like to thank her parents who have listened to her countless hours of reciting her poems. Poor Angels by Edward Hirsch. At this hour, the soul floats weightlessly through the city streets speechless and invisible, astonished by the smoky blend of greys and golds seeping out of the air, the dark half-tones of dusk suddenly filling the urban sky, while the body sits listlessly by the window, sullen and heavy, too exhausted to move, too weary to stand up or to lie down. At this hour, the soul is like a yellow wing slipping through the treetops, a little ecstatic cloud hovering over the sidewalks, calling out to the approaching night, amaze me, amaze me, while the body sits glumly by the window, listening to the clear summons of the dead, transparent as glass, clairvoyant as crystal. Some nights, it is almost ready to join them. Oh, this is a strange, unlikely tethering, a furious grafting of the quick and the slow. When the soul flies up, the body sinks down, and all night, locked in the same cramped room, they go on quarreling, stubbornly threatening to leave each other, wordlessly filling the air with the sound of a low, internal burning. How long can this bewildering marriage last? At midnight, the soul dreams of a small fire of stars flaming on the other side of the sky, but the body stares into an empty night sheen, a hollow-eyed darkness. Poor luckless angels, feverish old loves, don't separate yet. Let what rises live with what descends. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. I would like to welcome back our final contestant of the day, freshman Sophie Slutsky. She would like to, she would like to say thank you to her family for supporting her and listening to her recite her poem many of times. She would also like to thank her awesome English teacher, Mrs. Erico. The Layers by Stanley Kunitz. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind, as I am compelled to look, before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites, over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exulting somewhat, 
with my will intact to go wherever I need to go, and every stone on the road precious to me in my darkest night when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage. A nimbus clouded voice directed me. Live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. Before anything else is said, I would like to say thank you to all of our contestants. They did a fabulous job here today. <clears throat> now, as the judges tabulate the scores and determine the winner of today's competition, please sit back and welcome the performance by Mr. Padron. Thank you. Um, this is going to be a performance on one of my main instruments, which is the concert Grand Marimba, uh, and the piece is called Yellow After the Rain.
Thank you. Unfortunately, that's all I have, so uh, you're going to have to wait <laughs> until they're finished. Um, but uh, this has been really lovely. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Padrone. All right, before we uh, begin, uh, there are so many people that allow this program to come to fruition, uh, and I think you'll agree that this was the most competitive bunch we have ever had. So can we please give all the competitors one last round of applause? Uh, let's give Mr. Padrone another round of applause for stepping up today to play. <laughs> And then for our judges as well. They've been engrossed in poetry for three hours. And then lastly, and I've, I've been reflecting and thinking what an unsung hero Marie Bushman has been for three years as the mistress of ceremonies. So let's give Marie and Michael and Audley a round of applause. Okay, I'm gonna call all the contestants to the stage. They will line up. They're going to receive a beautiful certificate, a macaroon from Fedora's, and a hearty handshake from our principal and our MCs. Okay, so welcome back to the stage, senior Haley Gronenthal. <laughs> Junior Zora Holness. Sophomore, Diego Montalegre. And the first of our most poised group of freshmen I've ever seen, Gabrielle Cody. Bless you. Senior, Natasha Vargas. Junior, already, they grow up so fast, Rod Macho. And the second Bionyash to grace our finalist stage, please welcome back sophomore Clara Bionyash. Freshman, Melissa Rothenberg. Please welcome back senior Brooke Zellner. And I have some unfortunate news. Those of you that witnessed in the first round Diana Gonzalez's gorgeous bilingual poem, uh, she uh, came down with an illness. She wasn't able to compete in the second round or join us right now. But can we give her a big round of applause in absentia? Somebody text her, let her know we love her. All right, uh, please welcome back sophomore, Glenda Caramba. <laughs> please welcome back freshman, Anshal Aich. Yeah, come on down. Come on down, Sardines. There you go. Senior, Matadi Balev. Junior, you all know her, Gina Del Tego. Please welcome back sophomore, Marissa Imordino. And finally, bring home our freshman, Sophie Slutsky. Okay, folks, here's the fun part and where I turn the microphone over to Dr. Dauber.
All right, good morning, everybody. Hey, look at that, thank you. All right, well, congratulations to all of you. This is always one of the most joyful things that we do each year. I love it, I don't know. There's a new iPad Air commercial that comes from Dead Poets Society with the narrative from Robin Williams that always kind of gets me, so this is like great that it all fits together. So to all of you and to everybody else, Super, this makes our school look great, and we would be foolish not to acknowledge all the hard work that goes into this with Ms. Henderson. Please give her a big round, a big, big round of applause. All right, all right, getting to the awards. It's like uh, being on the Oscars. I'm as nervous as all of you are. So the envelope <clears throat> reads, our second runner-up, Haley Gronenthal, congratulations. And our first runner-up. But I mind you, I should acknowledge that between our first runner-up and our second runner-up, there was a quarter point difference separating the two as to how tight the competition is. But at this time, if you would join me, our first runner-up, Miss Zora Holness. <laughs> Now, without further ado, we have our champion, 2014 Poetry Out Loud champion, Lawrence High School, whose name will be added to this list, and then we'll go on to regionals. If you would join me in congratulating Ms. Natasha Vargas. <laughs> I think if we can also add, on Natasha's behalf, every year, now with Natasha being a senior, she's been a finalist every year that she's been up here, and she's finally won as a senior. And you know what the craziest thing is, to me, having seen Natasha on stage in productions and, and any number of things, when I knew her at the intermediate school, I didn't even know what her voice sounded like. She was so quiet and she was so shy, but to see her blossom into someone who's so confident and so involved in these types of things, is just, it makes me feel really good. You've done a fantastic job. 